600,000 people go missing in the United States each year. Tens of thousands remain mysteriously missing. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mysteriously Missing. I'm Justine. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Karen. Today's episode is about Derek Joseph Luking, and he's been missing since March 17th of 2012. Now, and it is kind of a, you know, an older case, but it's still very interesting. And we've been doing a lot of current cases, so I kind of wanted to mix it up for you guys. And we've covered cases in the western United States, some along the Pacific Crest Trail. So we wanted to spend some time on the Appalachian Trail. And the Appalachian Trail stretches about 2,190 miles from Georgia to Maine. So this episode retraces Derek's last known location in Cherokee, North Carolina, near the Tennessee-North Carolina state line on the Appalachian Trail. And Derek was last seen leaving the Microtel Inn and Suites in Cherokee, North Carolina at around 4 o'clock a.m. And this was on March 17th of 2012. His white Ford Escape was found at the Newfound Gap area in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park around 8.30 a.m. But no one recalled having seen Derek himself at the park. He has never been heard from again. And Derek was described as dependable, organized, and on time. Ryan Molden, who's his roommate, said that Derek was quiet, but he wasn't meek. The pair became roommates after college, and he had a servant heart, went overseas and helped the poor and those who needed a voice. Sound like a very kind, caring individual. Friends and family stated he is a man who enjoys nature and being outdoors. According to his family, Derek was not particularly experienced with the outdoors, so he may have perished in his efforts. There was also an item in a news article that reported his family had stated he was an avid camper and a fan of survival television show with Bear Grylls called Man vs. Wild. On this show, Bear gets left out in the wilderness by himself with little to no gear and has to find his way back to civilization while living off of the land. So that's a little contradiction between the two articles, but he may have been an avid camper, you know, with tents and the proper gear, but maybe knew little about surviving in the wilderness, finding water, food, and shelter. Derek lived in Louisville, Tennessee, and his nickname was, or is, Drock, and he may go by his initials, DJ. A co-worker, Lisa, had stated that Derek and I used to walk into work together in the mornings. He was never much of a talker, but he was kind. Derek's date of birth is May 13th, 1987. He was 24 years old when he disappeared, and he would be 32 today. He's about 5'10 to 6 feet tall. He weighs anywhere from 215 pounds to 225 pounds. And when Derek went missing, he was wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt, dark colored track pants with a white stripe down the side of each leg, dark colored sneakers, and possibly a waterproof watch. He also may have been carrying camouflage print real tree rain gear and a black or dark blue book bag type of day pack. His family states he did have the necessary supplies to live in the woods for a long period of time. He did not take all the camping gear he purchased, though. Derek is Caucasian. He has medium brown colored hair, which is about half an inch long with a receding hairline and hazel eyes. He had a half inch beard at the time of his uh, disappearance and he may wear prescription eyeglasses with metal rims for driving. He has stretch marks on his lower back and a tattoo of Japanese characters, meaning live or life on his left upper chest. His mother is Sheila Luking. Father is Tim. He has two sisters, Kim and Kara, and an aunt, Julie Phillips. And Derek was born in Northern Virginia. He graduated from Johnson University, formerly Johnson Bible College in Knoxville. And Derek worked as an orderly for Peninsula Behavior Health Center in Tennessee. Earlier that year in 2012, Tim Luking, Derek's father, had noticed a change in his son. He started drinking a little bit and smoking cigarettes, which was highly unusual for him. He wasn't happy with his job, where his life was going. 
He assumed Derek was dealing with post-graduation stress and transition to adulthood. So, I mean, it kind of seems like his dad was getting a little bit worried about him. You know, he was 24. Well, when he went missing, he was 24. But, um, you know, he might have been unhappy with his job. He wasn't married yet, and we don't know if he had a girlfriend. I don't know. He might have been just kind of... I I felt that way before in my early 20s where you just kind of don't know where your life is going. Wondering where your life is headed and maybe feeling a little depressed. And certainly the change in behavior indicates that something was going on with him. Exactly. His family and friends dispute that he had any serious depression or suicidal tendencies, which would have caused him to, you know, take his life in the national park. So they're, they're disputing that, saying that was not what would have happened. So now we're going to jump into this timeline, and it actually began two days before Derek went missing. So this is Thursday, March 15th of 2012. Ryan Molden, which is Derek's roommate, had stated, when I left, his alarm was going off and went off the entire time I was going to work, and I thought maybe he had left and forgot to hit his alarm. Ryan didn't know it at the time, that the sound of the alarm meant something was off. When he didn't show up for work, it was super unusual, and that was our first hint that something was not normal, he said. When he didn't show up for work, people tried to contact him, and all calls to his cell phone went unanswered. When a mutual friend alerted Ryan that Derek hadn't arrived at work, Ryan called Derek's family. The Lukings traveled from their home in Virginia through the night to Tennessee. And his father stated, I know when people call parents with concerns about children, it is not good. Ryan and his family members checked Derek's computer and found a search for the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and a reservation for a hotel. Over two days, it was discovered he purchased over $1,000 in camping supplies from Bass Pro Shop, Knife Works, and Coleman's. Derek also purchased additional supplies from Walmart for cash, and I guess the family had found five empty bags in his car um, from Walmart, but there was nothing in the bag, so it's hard to tell what he actually purchased. The family believes he stayed at the Motel 6 on the 14th, that Wednesday, the Smokemont campground in the park on the Thursday that Ryan contacted the family, which was the 15th, and then the Microtel Hotel in Cherokee on Friday the 16th. So his parents, you know, were called out from Virginia. They were headed to Tennessee, and Derek had not entered the National Forest yet and was actually staying at the campground and then at the micro hotel in Cherokee. So while they were on route, he had not entered the forest. That's kind of interesting and, right. and very proactive of them. And I definitely think Ryan noticing, you know, the alarm going off, things were not like everyday, you know, normal routine. I think he did a really good thing calling the parents. Excellent job on everybody's part. Right. March 17th, Saturday, the official date he vanished, the family stated that this was a one-year anniversary of the death of his grandfather, with whom Derek had been very close. So maybe that was on his mind. I mean, he knew the anniversary was coming up, but... The family went out looking for him that day and went to his last hotel reservation. Watching the surveillance video, it showed Derek leaving a microtel in and suites in Cherokee, North Carolina, near the National Park at around 4 o'clock in the morning. He was wearing a backpack, and the video footage would be the last time anyone would ever see Derek. Leaving at 4 in the morning makes me think that he didn't want to be seen. Possibly, yeah. Must have still been dark out, and he just wanted to enter the trail quietly. I mean, because you're going to a place that, I mean, there's no one else around in these trails. Also, you want to get an early start if you're going to make some distance, so that could have been another motivation. Now, on the bed of the hotel room, his family found a Bible, and on the floor was a liquor bottle. By luck, they managed to find Derek's car, which was the white Ford Escape, in the parking lot of an area called Newfound Gap on the Tennessee-North Carolina line. This was the state line at about 8.30 in the morning. You know, the car was 20 miles from the hotel in the National Forest. This family was very lucky to find it. You know, did they have an indication where the car was from their search on his computer? Yeah, because he could have left this hotel and gone anywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of 
woods to cover. Yeah. Now, a note stating, don't look for me, was found in his car along with his wallet, cash, and a car key. The note was not addressed to anyone, so it could have been for the family or the rangers who knew who would have found his car, I guess. And as a side note, the vehicle is now with the family. The Park Service initially asked the family not to search directly for Derek to avoid contaminating clues. They wanted trained Park Service searchers on the trails. So the family handed out flyers with Derek's picture to everyone who hit the trail. Despite Derek's note, search and rescue workers persevered and they did try to follow him. An intense search was launched of the area where his car was found and rangers interviewed campers and hikers in the vicinity asking whether they had seen him. But strangely, no one could remember seeing Derek despite it being a sunny day and the area was full of people picnicking, hiking, and so on. Authorities could not figure out why he would have entered the wilderness minus all of his new equipment that he had. As a result, authorities believe that he might have gone off trail immediately after leaving his car and quickly got lost or intentionally avoided people in the area to avoid detection. That was worrying because although the trail itself was well-traveled, off-trail led into thick wilderness, decreasing Derek's chances for survival. Also, you know, we had talked about him leaving at four in the morning. They said they interviewed people. So it was only 20 miles away from his hotel, so he could have gotten there in the dark. So earlier we had mentioned that Derek did not take all his camping gear, and a ranger had said that we would have felt better if he had bought all of his gear and brought it with him. In this case, he made preparations, but he did not follow through. So leaving stuff behind, I guess they looked at this kind of as a negative thing. The searchers had been organized into 14 search teams that walked more than 70 miles of trails surrounding the newfound Gap parking area. Trail search teams explored any area along the trail where it would appear relatively easy to get off the trail into the woods, and once off the trail, the teams would look for tracks or clues that anybody passed that way. The teams continued into the woods until they reached a point where it was either unsafe to continue or until they reached a barrier such as a rhododendron thicket. And that's where Derek could have not gone off the trail without leaving evidence of his passage. So, I mean, it looks like these search crews did a really good job, you know, looking for evidence in thickets and off the trail. Because going off trail, could you imagine? That's got to be so hard. You very, know? very challenging. And it looks like they did not leave any stone unturned. So now it's the 24th and 25th of March. As the Park Service's direct search wound down, the family started theirs. Family and friends, along with other concerned people, had gathered, and a total of over 60 people hiked and handed out flyers. They had hiked a total of about 175 miles of trail, and people handed out about 3,000 flyers to people in the park and the surrounding areas. Then on March 29th, the Great Smoky Mountain Park Service repelled down some high cliffs and did not find anything. His family thinks he may have gone into the park intentionally to spend some time alone. Searchers hiked hundreds of miles of trails, which included using multiple dog scent trackers, three different days using helicopters, and one night helicopter. Unfortunately, no significant clues were found leading to Derek, but rangers still believed he was in the park somewhere and possibly off a trail. On April 9, 2012, this is three weeks after he went missing, a NamUs case was created. Appalachian Trail hikers who have talked to the family have said that Derek could survive for a long time with the supplies he did carry into the woods. So now in September of 2012, this is about six months after Derek went missing, a backpack and then subsequently human remains were discovered in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park close to the area where Derek had disappeared. But it was actually a young man named Michael Giovanni Cochini. He was 23 years old and he was last seen by friends on Sunday, March 18th, 2012, one day after Derek had gone missing. And our and, condolences do go out to the family. Yeah, that must have been really hard. I mean, 23 years old, that's so young. 
Rangers located Michael's abandoned car parked at the walkway along Newfound Gap Road, about one mile south of the park's Sugarlands Visitor Center, on March 20th. While the search for Derek was being conducted, there's a walkway there that does not connect to the park's trail system, so there would be no reason that backpackers would have vehicles there overnight. The walkway is a short, easy trail that extends into the woods a short distance off the road and then dead ends at the west prong of the Little Pigeon River. Like Derek, the search was called off for Michael after more than a week of efforts turned up nothing. The skull fragment was located within a mile from where Michael's car was found. It was revealed as well that Michael was not an avid hiker and his motivation for entering the Smoky Mountains remains a mystery. The reason we brought this article up is because it's interesting that two men of approximately the same age go missing in the same area at the same time. Have they checked the phone records to see if, you know, these two knew each other or were talking? I, yeah. Or is it just coincidence? I don't know. It's it's still kind of like boggles my mind a little bit. When it's you a little think about too it. coincidental. Right. I'm sure the family has checked this out. Yeah. So. so now about six years after Derek went missing, Derek's family is still searching for answers and hoping to find out what happened to him. His roommate Ryan was stated saying his family and I and many others have tried to figure out what his intentions were, his motives and what happened. Each time we have one, something pokes a hole in it. And this is, you know, almost six years later, and they have no answers on where he is. And a family member stated it's tough to relive those things every day, looking at pictures. We are still hoping to find out what happened to him. It's difficult not to have any closure on this situation. They cling to their faith, praying one day an answer will come. I'm not blind to the fact that he could have died. Someone could have taken his life. It could have been an accident. But we all hope that he is still out there, Ryan said. His Facebook page, this is seven years in, we can have him declared deceased, but we won't. We still managed his accounts, store his stuff, and hope. It is so much more intense to lose someone to the unknown. I would welcome him back with open arms of joy or stop worrying if I just knew. Until we know, I have hope. So now May 18th of 2019, this is a, an article had reported that Brian King, a spokesman for the Appalachian Trail Conservancy states, violence is extremely rare on the Appalachian Trail, which stretches about 2,190 miles from Georgia to Maine. About 2 to 3 million people hike the trail each year. The chance of being murdered on the trail is about 1 in 20 million. A report states that since 1974, there have been 11 Appalachian Trail murders. The most recent occurred in 2011 when a hiker from Indiana named Scott Lilly died from asphyxia by suffocation, and it was an apparent homicide. The murder remains unsolved to this day. So, I mean, looking back from when this report started in 1974 up until now, you know, over a 45-year time span, there's been 11 murders. So it just looks like it's pretty rare for something to happen like this out on this trail. Foul play, right. So per an article on June 7th of 2019 called The Mysteries of the Smokies, there are five missing people out on the Appalachian Trail that were never found. The first one was Dennis Martin. He vanished on a camping trip with his family on June 14, 1969. Relatives last saw Dennis in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park as he headed northwest in Spence Field towards the Tennessee state line. They searched for months and never found a trace of the six-year-old. The second person is Trenny Lynn Gibson and... Trenny was reported missing October 8, 1976, while on a field trip with Bearden High School. The 16-year-old and her classmates were hiking near Andrews Bald and Klingman's Dome. No one on the trip remembered seeing her after 3 o'clock that day. The next one was Thelma Melton. She was reported missing on September 25, 1981. Thelma was 58 and from Jacksonville, Florida. She was hiking near Deep Creek campground with two friends when she went out ahead of them and then disappeared. 
She was familiar with the trail, having hiked it many times before. The fourth person is Christopher Cessna. Family members had reported Christopher missing on April 27th of 2011. Christopher was 45 years old, and it looks like he was from Cary, North Carolina. And park officials later discovered his 2009 Audi at the Newfound Gap parking area where Derek's car was also parked. Relatives reported Cessna as being depressed and that he might be suicidal and that he had a gun he owned, and I guess they couldn't find the gun. And the fifth person is Derek, but next week we will cover Paul, middle initial D, Par, P-A-U-R. He, Paul, left behind all his worldly possessions and entered the Appalachian Trail in early June of 2014. Concerns about his mental health surfaced alongside reports from fellow hikers that Paul is looking for God. So, I mean, all these people that have gone missing and never been found, it's pretty interesting. You can probably Google them and find more information on them. And I know there's Dave Pilates who's written a book called Missing 411 about some of these cases. Mm -hmm. And back to Derek, one um, interesting thing is there are huts and lean-tos along the route, the Appalachian Trail, and, you know, I'm wondering if he made it to some of these places and, and, and actually got shelter. Yeah, my thing is, like, he left a note that said, do not come looking for me or don't come and find me. So maybe he could have been really depressed and just wanted to be alone. With his grandfather's death, that might have, in, you know, been in influence on that right he also had a survival manual I just don't get like you leave your hotel at four in the morning I mean you have all this survival stuff so it kind of seems you know like he wasn't planning on taking his own life and you know did he leave all that stuff as a decoy and just head down the road and you know leave his wallet and cash though as a decoy that's you know that a lot of people wouldn't do that but that's a possibility yeah I kind of have this feeling like he he wanted to get away for a few days so he kind of gathered things that he could survive off of and then he left at four in the morning and started heading out on these trails but he had a plan He did, but maybe he got lost. And I mean, it's just weird that they can't find backpacks or anything. Be easy to do if you went off trail. Exactly. So their Facebook page is Find Derek Luking, and they have about 2,900 followers. And his mom runs that page. You can contact the investigation agency, uh, National Park Service, at 828. 497-1940 497-1940 and you can always stay anonymous like we always say but if you know anything about where Derek could be just at least to let the family know that their son is still alive or see anything unusual out on the trail right in that area in particular per the family please help spread the word to anyone hiking in that area to keep an eye out for Derek and keep praying and if you have any requests for us to do missing person cases in the wilderness or otherwise, please email us at mysteriouslymissing411 at gmail.com. And we post our YouTube videos so you can kind of see pictures and get a background idea of, you know, the person that we're talking about. But we just want to help this family. And if Derek's out there, we just, you know, let the family know he's still okay. And they need to know where their son is and brother. Right. Thank you for listening. Thank you.